Welcome back to the shop once again. Um, a few years ago, I did a video, Beginner's Guide to Mini Mill Tooling. Everything that I wish I would have seen that would have helped me out when I started this hobby. I also did another video, separate one, Beginner's Guide to Mini Lathe Tooling. Everything you need to basically know to get started. But I never did a video, Beginner's Guide to Machine Shop Tooling, covering calipers and all kinds of different things. And that would have really helped me out when I started, and I don't see that. Um, if you type that into YouTube, there isn't anything. There is stuff for woodworking and so on, but nothing for the machine shop. So. Um, for the advanced person, this video <clears throat> is going to be nothing, but maybe something will come out. So, hope you enjoy. Alright, the first thing I absolutely think every shop needs is a caliper. And there are lots of them out there, let me tell you. Um, what's the difference in them? Well, um, mid to toil, $160. Fowler, about $40. Brown and Sharp dial, uh, about $120. This was the first one that I ever bought, uh, and I've used it like crazy. Um, so what's the difference? Well, let's, I guess, pick up the cheaper one here. Um, if you go and look at the spec, you know, this guy will show a half a thou. Um, accuracy on it, well, ceramic, mid to toil, about as accurate as you can get, this is 100 thou, no, this is 50 thou, so, put it on there, it's showing 49, right, great, 49 and a half, so you go look at the spec on this guy, and it's only good to plus or minus 1 thou, this is the half here, yeah, 0 0.1005, and I guess, I don't know, <laughs> boy, why is he showing under? Earlier, it wasn't showing things like that, it was like right on the money. Funny, yeah, 995, interesting, okay. Well, whatever, um, look at the specs, anyone you buy, Look at the accuracy of it. This guy is plus or minus one thou. Um, this guy, 160 bucks, Mitutoyo, um, shows a half a thou. Again, you look at the specs, 160 bucks over 40 bucks, plus or minus one thou. Let's see what he's going to do here. This is uh, 0 0.1005. There it is, 0 0.1005. 50 thou. 50 thou, right on the money. So, um, also too, when you pick it up, they'll usually they come with a certificate and it'll tell you what the particular accuracy is of that caliper. Um, as far as if you really want, and I know a lot of people don't have <laughs> um, gauge blocks, either rectangular or a square, you can always buy one and then you can calibrate whatever you have. The dial, I particularly like because if you want to get really accurate, I mean down into tenths, um, you can calibrate this guy. Because I can put this on 50 thou and I can spin the dial around so that it reads exactly 50 thou. And this guy is already, I've calibrated it. If you go to zero, it's on the zero, which is nice. And here's a half, and it's showing a half. I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah. So these guys are very accurate, and you got to pay attention, too, that this jaw doesn't get sloppy, which is controlled by the two screws up here. Um, kind of hard to adjust. I wouldn't mess with them. I had to do this when it got so worn out that the jaw was crooked. And how to figure that out is you take a measurement out here and then you take a measurement back here. And if they don't match, it tells you that this jaw is pivoting this way. 
and it's loose so you got to tighten the screws up until everything gets nice and correct so that's kind of it I mean you can pick whatever you want um, these are the easiest things to work with if you're trying to measure diameter in the lathe of something or you're trying to measure something in the mill it's really easy there's other tricks too if you want to measure how deep something is you can put it up against there and you run it in you, uh, you can see I'm gonna hit it right there so you can measure from this face to here uh, you also have depth capability on it um, on all of them so and they even sell these little adapters that go on here that you can use it for a depth gauge uh, blocks and stuff on eBay um, temperature wise I assume this is stainless well it says stainless but I assume it's 304 a lot of people say temperature makes a big difference and not really um, move these guys all carefully off to the side uh, if you look at the coefficient of expansion for stainless steel 304 it's 17.3 times 10 to the minus sixth well-known number aluminum's even bigger but aluminum's like 24 uh, or 21 or something like that to 24 if you multiply that times the increase in temperature in Fahrenheit let's say we went up five degrees Fahrenheit times the length six inches if I'm going to measure way out here at the end times six inches that's going to be how much longer it's going to increase and I've already done the math this turns out to be point zero 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 that's the tenths right here five one nine so if I went up five degrees I'm gonna have a half a tenth increase in length um, so that's pretty insignificant if it went up ten degrees I'd be off a tenth which is why you see uh, many videos uh, the, the machinists after they turn something in the lathe they're gonna let it cool down because it can go up 10 degrees real easy and if you're trying to hit one tenth um, accuracy or whatever it you're gonna be off because it's expanded so I think I've covered everything here on these guys all right next up I don't know whether the shop absolutely has to have a micrometer um, depends on what you're doing in the shop so for the mill I've got other ways other ways of measuring things but you can use it in the mill this is mainly for the lathe and only if you're really trying to hit tight tolerances um, maybe a tenth is when I start bringing these out least expensive to the most expensive um, eBay find very simple for 1,000 measurements. Um, again, usually when you buy these guys too, they'll come with a one inch um, calibrated um, thing so you can check your micrometer out, um, whether it's on the money or not. And I have yet to see one, even this and eBay find right on the money. Can you easily check uh, a half a thou? Yeah. I did it earlier and yes you can clearly see that the line is in between the two one thousandths marks so you can get to a half a thou with this and you can probably start guessing into tenths um, so that's real cheap this guy I think was like fifty dollars you can buy micrometers in zero to one inch one to two inch three uh, two to three so on um, the thing you want to look for though is that they do have a ratchet so that you're consistent with how much force you're putting on whatever you're measuring um, this guy's good it has what's called a veneer and you can research how to read that but this is good capable of measuring down to a tenth of a thou and it's all spot on carbide tips you kind of really want when you're getting down into measuring a tenth though dirt really makes a difference and what I do to clean them off 
is I'll take a piece of paper, I'll clamp on it, and I'll draw the paper out and then examine that there's no particle still in there. That's the easiest way to get rid of the um, dirt in there. So to a tenth, and the same way with the mitt tutorial, now you're getting more expensive. Carbide tip, ratchet, um, veneers on it, spot on with everything that I've measured. You know, I can, you, again, you can also buy your own uh, single gauge block, square or rectangular, and you can check different um, spots on it. Uh, meaning you can check, you know, a hundred thousandths or a half inch or one inch with the uh, calibration uh, thing gauge that came with it. Now you're getting real expensive, and you'll see this probably every shop has one of these guys. The accuracy on this guy is a half of a tenth of a thousandth. So yeah, when I need to really check something, you can see there's one, it's point two one one zero five. There's the half a tenth right there. And it's really hard to, you know, just say I want to move a half a tenth on this. Um, no veneer, but it doesn't need it, so it's built in. So a great instrument. I use these guys when I really have to get tight tolerances, but they're very awkward to use uh, in the lathe, in my opinion. A small lathe, at least, a mini lathe. Larger lathe, they're probably very easy to use. So again, you know, in what you're doing in the shop, if you only need to hit a thousandth or a half a thou, this is perfect. If you want to be nicer with the, this guy doesn't have a ratchet, right? Yeah, I don't think so. I can close it down. So, and it doesn't have a lock. Oh no, the lock's built right here to lock it. Yeah, see, there's no ratchet on this guy. You can calibrate them. There's a little bitty hole in these guys. I don't see it on this one. Wow, that's interesting. <coughs> you can't calibrate this guy. But these you do, there's a little hole someplace, there it is. And it comes with a little wrench that you can, it's a lot of force, but you gotta, you can move it so that when you zero it out, all the zero lines up completely. Or if you're trying to just calibrate it, something's off on it for some reason, you can move it so that it reads exactly 50 thou or so on. So I think that's about all I can say on micrometers. All right, next up we have dial indicators and test indicators. And again, depending upon what you're doing in your shop, you may or may not need one. Um, typically, uh, as far as accuracy is concerned, dial indicators, it depends on how many revolutions you do on the dial. Two to three revolutions, they're typically only accurate to um, a thou. So I locked out with these guys. I've got a granite surface, I've got a comparator stand, and I've run them through their paces. Um, if you want something that's pretty accurate, metric. This guy is uh, basically 0 0.01 millimeters per division. And if you do the math, you'll figure out how many thousands that is, or tenths of a thou. Um, when do you use them? Usually, uh, there's a lot of machinists that don't like self-centering chucks. They'll have a four jaw independent, and they'll use um, a dial indicator to check runout. Very few use a test indicator. But they'll mount it on the machine and they'll see the needle bopping around and ooh, boy that's real slow it's cold in the shop these guys are a lot faster right yeah oh yeah interesting i don't really play with him that much he was dirt cheap which is why i picked him up but um put him to the side um they're they've got it mounted in the lathe and they're checking to see run out of the material and centering it up so um, that's one use for it. The other one is I've seen them um, check the saddle. You know, they'll use a six incher and they want to know how far in they're going uh, with the saddle and the cutter into the material. This guy I mainly use to check 
um, defined absolute rotational center to a thousandth to set my cutters uh, with. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, there's magnetic bases. There's these um, type of clamps here. There's different sizes. Digital guy. This is supposed to be good to a half a thou. It's very touchy and it is accurate. So um, on these guys too, I make my own tips. They do sell a set of tips, um, but they're not really flat. So any off the shelf, I'll just use the point. Every one of them I've seen, you gotta somehow clamp this really well to undo it for the first time. These guys I can easily unscrew now, but they put them on with such force. And there's two different types. There's a 440, I think it's a 440 thread. Uh, yeah, is one. And then there's a metric type. So yeah, they don't tell you in the descriptions what you're going to get. Um, nice thing about these guys too is if you want to zero something out you can spin the dial around and zero it set the needle on zero um, use this also to tram your mill front to back and tilt side to side um, so these kind of do come in pretty handy in the shop um, I really I don't think I'd recommend this guy picked it up to see what it was and to learn it needs a lot of cleaning though so that's the digital one. Here's a metric one that you can play with. They're cheap just to experiment with. And the long one I do use with a magnetic base. Test indicators. You know, why are these only accurate to a thou? Because of the gearing and how it works inside. And again, it's, you know, it depends on how many revolutions you're doing. Why are test indicators basically good to a tenth? because they don't move one inch. They, the dial maybe goes around two times, so they don't have a whole lot of movement, therefore error. Cheap guy, Turlin, first one I ever bought. Uh, it's good to a thou. You can easily see a half a thou. Expensive mid to toil gives you tenths of a thou. So if you really want to check run out, you can get the mid to toyo, and again, these guys, you can spin the dial around to zero it on the needle. Um, there's all kinds of different ways of holding them, Noga arms, magnetic arms, and things. Very small dovetail to hold them. Um, there's also, too, a lot of people aren't paying I've seen people coming in at an angle, with this this guy does move you can bend it without damaging the, the thing they're at an angle if you think about it there's trigonometry involved with the accuracy if you're coming in straight you can move a thou if you're at an angle and you move a thou it's not going to read the same so you try to want to come in with this guy straight and measure whatever you're doing like if you're tricking run out on a piece of material in the lathe um, you can use these guys in the mill. There's a special arm that can go up in the spindle where you can find the center of a hole. You know, that you, you've got a hole centered up. Can't do that with a dial. So, uh, I don't think there's anything else to say. Um, this was the first one I bought, and same way with the dial. Later on, picked up all these other guys for different things. This is a no-brainer, right? You're going to need a ruler. <laughs> uh, not a whole lot to say about them, but um, for me, yeah, a mini mill, mini lathe, inevitably I'm in a confined space. I don't want to move the saddle to get the cutter out of the way or the mill head, Z assembly. And I'm trying to measure something vertically or somehow Inevitably, I just can't get it in there. So I wound up cutting a six inch in half. It's three inches and it, it it works beautifully. I use it a lot and I forgot to bring something else over here. All right, yeah, this guy. So for the same reason, a lot of times I'm trying to measure the depth of a hole or something and you can just put this on top and you just lock it, use the caliper to measure what it is. 
Um, so these two guys I use all the time. And the splash screen at the end of every video shows the link to my website, which has drawings to this and a lot more and reference material. And it also shows my email address if you have a question or need some help. The other thing I can say is, you, know, you can probably see this guy is highly reflective. Um, inevitably, you've got, you're in the mill or the lathe and you've got spotlights on the work, your material you're working on. You go in there with a shiny one and it's just reflecting right in your eyes and you cannot see what you're doing. So for that reason, I like the generals. Uh, this is a general and this is a general. This is an old craftsman. I have no idea where I got it from. But these guys have a matte finish to them and they don't really reflect. So I'm thrilled with these. I like these, prefer them. And I just recently picked up a 12 inch in case I need that sometime. Um, but they're also in tents. I like working in hundred thousandths. There is Imperial on the other side. I don't really work with, you know, sixteenths and eighths, so. Um, so that's all I can say about these guys uh, when you go to select one or get one. I'll also throw in this just for grins and giggles. Let me get these out of the way. Die cam. Let me turn it over here so you can read it. It comes in blue and red. I just picked up the red for grins and giggles. Um, it does have a brush, a ball thing. No, it is a brush inside that you can smear it or spread it on. It is used for layout. And I don't think I've ever used it for layout. But um, what you can do, yeah, a lot of people I do see using it for layout stuff. And I made my own scribes that you can use. This was a um, stainless steel welding rod. Put it in the drill chuck, hand drill. Run it on the side of a grinding wheel. Gives you a nice sharp point. This one, just turn aluminum. And this is a sewing needle. Just snap the back off and he's just pressed in there. I think he's probably um, Loctited in there. So, I mean, you can make your own scribes or you can buy one or whatever. What I have used this for is when I first got my lathe, the compound at certain spots it was binding, it's hitting something. So you spread this all over the dovetail area, the gib and all that, run it in and it'll tell you real quick where it's binding because it'll scrape it off. Um, I've also used it on the mill for the y-axis in the very extremes it was hitting and I discovered it's hitting on the right side on the very back the left side was fine so and on the front it was the left front right front was fine so it tells you where to put the lapping compound to lower it out you know straighten it out and for those machines on the steel base the lapping compound you can go to an auto supply and you can get this various grit um, compounds for um, lapping valves, the valves on a car um, engine. And I used that, I had that from a long time ago when I rebuilt a Thunderbird huge engine. So just wanted to throw this stuff in so you can know what that's about. Okay, drill bits. Yep, inevitably you're gonna drill a hole, right? <laughs> There's a lot of different sets. These are 1 to 60s, and this particular set is high speed steel, and they go up in almost thousands increments. I mean, it's, it, and it goes way down there, too. So, they tell you what the, the numbers are like 52 or whatever, and they give you the dimensions 67,000, 70,000. So, and the reason I always I always wondered before, you know, when you buy a set, the sharp point's always up on all the sets. And the first thing I do is I turn them over. Why? If you like getting cut up, then leave them this way, because you're going to grab 
the bit and then you're going to get cut up either in the spiral the helix or the tip so I got real tired of getting cut up and turn them all over so this is the high-speed steel set which I use and recently I go to drill hog and I'm buying the Molly M7s <coughs> all right get it open ah, there so these are great they are um, split points and they are sharp and if you want to drill through drill rod or something hard you're not going to hurt these things I've done it and it goes in like butter uh, the nice thing about drill hog they're not that expensive and each drill bit is guaranteed for life when you buy them you have a number here and you need they give you a card business card which gives you the address of where you have to go to register them you enter in the number and you're done um, this particular set was kind of funny bought I buy them all off of eBay they have a um, they sell them there so this particular set had one wrong drill bit in it and I contacted them through eBay they said no problem they immediately sent me out the correct drill bit so I now have a full correct set why is that so much higher oh because it wasn't going in all the way a lot of these things too there's sharp edges on the metal I'll take all the bits out and deburr it I'll run a stone over it or something to get rid of these sharp edges so that's the numbered set and next up there is um, your traditional imperial 16 to a half inch and again I did the drill hog but this was the first set that I had you can tell well used for it. Uh, again especially these are turned over because they are sharp and they cut you up big time so you have this whole set one half inch um, it's one what is it one eight one sixteenth to a half inch same thing I bought the set off of eBay registered the number I'm good for life so if I accidentally destroy one somehow or damage it um, they'll replace it and yeah they're also back gun or whatever you want to call it uh, next up what is this oh yeah ow the arm can work it's another one 16 to a half inch stub length which on my mill comes in very handy because there's a lot of times I don't have the Z height to be able to drill uh, even on the because uh, I've got the shorter lathe the mini lathe but 10 incher so the tail stock I don't have the clearance for some of these big half inch bits so I bought this off of Amazon Chicago Latrobe um, I think it was about 120 bucks but I have used this like left and right next up many don't know this exists A to Z there is an A to Z set again drill hog guaranteed for life but they don't go down that small as you can see but I have used them there are some situations where this particular size doesn't exist anyplace else so this gives me um, just about every size I think between all the sets um, for what I want and then the last set is metric and so now I can do any of the metric sizes uh, can't even remember where I got this obviously new because they all match this had to be an Amazon purchase so there's the metric set too that you get into more different sizes and then I did show this in a video Banggood metric these drill into stainless steel like you wouldn't believe so uh, I know a lot of people saw the video and did tell me they went to Banggood and bought the set they are expensive for the full set this only goes up to what 10 millimeters there's a bigger set and then there's a smaller set too and they're tri points they're, it's kind of weird you can't really see it but there's three cutting edges to them and they don't walk boy this guy's been used huh yeah six and a half probably 
So that's all the drill bits and all the different sets that you can pick up. Okay, drill bits. Now let's talk about the drill chucks. These are the two chucks that I use all the time. This guy I use in the middle all the time. And this is the MT2 taper for the tailstock on the lathe. Um, both arbors come off of Amazon. Seems like I'm always lucky. I find what I need when I need it. And at a reasonable price. But So, um, both chucks came off of eBay. Uh, they're older generations. This guy is a Jacobs 2B. The other one is also a Jacobs. But um, I was able to find jaws that are labeled NOS, which stands for New Old Stock. So I could tear this chuck apart in the arbor, replace the jaws, and I basically have a brand new chuck that I love. Um, this guy, like I said, is the Jacobs 2B. It covers 0 to 3 eighths, or 0 to about 9 and a quarter millimeters. And yes, 0, because you can see there's points on it. So when you close it up, it there is no room for anything in there I mean it's zero so I love that you can use this on small bits or whatnot but um, kind of a heads up on this guy I was lucky and found this type of arbor um, I had bought another one I found off of um, eBay with new old stock jaws so this is brand new but uh, when I went to buy an arbor, I wound up with this one and didn't realize that in this guy, it's uh, got a face, but then there's a recess. So because of the way this is poking out, the actual face wound up touching this. So this guy was just wobbling all over the place. So you need that type. I did machine a spacer. <laughs> To try to correct it but it still didn't work so I wound up putting it on my precision chuck which I would say um, is it worth it I don't think so because what I discovered is um, these jaws move I'm not sure if you can see it but yeah they, they ooh, this is pretty tight right now I'll probably back it up more <laughs> there yeah it's moving all over the place so if you put a drill bit in there and you run it down and you clamp on it, these guys could be skewed or off center. And I've seen drill bits wobbling. What I've discovered is once you clamp down, back up and do this a few times. And that makes sure these are all seated correctly. And then you'll have, I've, I've seen bits wobble, I've done that, and now you can't see any movement at all on them. So, And the thread on this guy, it is threaded, it's a 3H24, uh, is a homemade arbor from something else, but I might try, uh, well, I might try making one for this guy so I'd have another chuck, but I just put him in a, a junk drawer, not a junk drawer, my spare, spare drawer. So that's this guy. Um, same thing happened with this. This is a 7B Jacobs. It goes zero to a quarter inch. Use it all the time on the mill. Goes in a half inch. Um, the faces line up on it. I guess this doesn't have this protrusion on it or whatever. Uh, or zero to six and a half millimeter. It's threaded. It's a half inch 20. And I did rebuild it too, so this is basically a brand new chuck. And anything I need in the mill bigger than the quarter inch, I'll just use an ER32 collet and crank on a drill bit with that so I can go up to a half inch. And that's where the stub length drill bits really come in handy because I don't have the length for this. You gotta have the clearance for the chuck and the drill bit and then you work so um i think that's all i can say on these guys some miscellaneous items here to talk about 
Uh, I guess I'll start with deburring tools. <laughs> Classic for um, stock square edges after you milled it. You want to break the burr off the edge. Bought this from the little machine shop. Kind of bummed that uh, advertising here. Um, you know, you spend money for it. I don't want to give them free advertising, but I use this guy all the time. It's a great deburr tool. Uh, when it comes to holes, this is my favorite one. I just manually run it, spin it around in a hole to deburr the edge. Um, bought this from a ret retired machinist. It has beautiful sharp edges. If you're going to try to do it in the mill or on the lathe, this guy will chatter. This one, with the spiral to it that you can see, does not chatter. So if you want to try to do some countersink or something, pick up one of these and it'll give you a nice clean countersink. This guy, I, okay, that's what that's for. Now, um, edge finders, yeah, in the mill. A few types here. I had um, first bought this one, 3 8 and use it all the time. What I really hate though is anything you touch it leaves a mark on it. So if I put something in the mill and I've already got a nice finish on it, especially aluminum, this will leave a mark and I gotta go and redo it. But uh, it's always a pain constantly changing out the ER32 collets. And nine times out of a ten, I've always got a half inch in there, so I bought the half inch, so I don't have to keep changing the collet. These are cheap. These are brown and sharps off of Amazon, ten, twelve bucks each. This one I had bought uh, way in the beginning of the hobby, not knowing any better. Don't really use it that much. It's kind of hard to get this nice and straight so you can get it up in a collet. Um, I do use it a lot to find the, to line up on a hole because once you're in the hole you can see it shifted and you can easily feel even a thousandth of an inch you know that there's it's still not on center right now that's pretty perfect right there. So it's kind of good to have another brown and sharp very inexpensive and that's what I use that one for. Now, these center drills, spotting drills. I see a lot of people who don't know, maybe they do know, you know, the difference in them. Um, sp uh, center drills are primarily for making the hole for a center, be it live or dead, whatever. As you can tell, it's this part is making the clearance for the point while this part in the back is making the actual angle for the uh, center. So these are center drills. You can see all kinds of different sizes. You can use them for creating the hole to start uh, drilling a hole with a drill bit, but they're not really meant for that. Spotting drills are, they come in various different sizes, 90 degrees and there's 120 degrees which is this one this 120 is more for starting making the hole or the spot where you're going to do a drill bit and it won't start wobbling or walking around on you you can also use the 90 degrees i bought all of them way in the beginning of the hobby not knowing any these differences um, these are all YG-1s. They're beautiful. I do use them sometimes by hand for deburring a hole. Um, I've used this, that um, Mitutoyo set. Not Mitutoyo, the gauge, square gauge block set. All the rods that I made, the drill rods. After tapping it, I ran one of these in slightly to deburr the... Um, the hole with the threads in it. These are steeper angles. I'm not sure what the angle is. Probably 60 degrees it looks like. But So there's that information. 
Next up, uh, taps and threading dies. <laughs> Are my tools always this clean? No, I just finished cleaning them up. They were a wreck after years worth of use. These are re-threading dies and they're easily identified because they're octangular shaped. Um, they're primarily used by auto mechanics to re-thread a screw or a bolt to clean the threads up to chase them. I uh, bought these a long time ago off of Amazon, metric and imperial and they pretty much so cover everything but it was curious one die i forgot which one it was didn't quite cut the threads right i used them to create threads rather than chasing threads or re-threading something but it made a bolt where a nut would go on it but anything longer like say a threaded nut that was in a uh, half inch long wouldn't go on. I used an actual threading die and it took the slightest sliver off of the threads. It made the thread from a, a wall to slightly concave and then the nut went on it. So re-threading dies, very popular, very inexpensive for sets. You find them all over the place. But they can be used to thread, but they're not really meant for that. The, this is a set of true threading dies. It is very expensive. Uh, and they're round. Oh boy, the lid doesn't open up more than that, huh? That's interesting. What stops it? <laughs> oh, the way it's, the lid is. So, uh, yeah, you can see I'm good. Yeah, I'm still collecting. I'm missing a few here, and my spare re-threads are here. Um, so these are true um, threading dies, and you can tell the handle. Ah, this only has one divot in it. Usually when you see a threading handle, it's got two screws for two um, dents in these things. These only have one. It must be very old or something, but... Okay, so threading dies, and I go up to pretty big. That's a metric one. Um, no set on that. Taps, not a whole lot to say. Interesting, I have a new one of these. Yeah, I have a new one that I could replace. I just got it. Taps um, come in all kinds of different sizes obviously but they are different types this is a set here um, this is called a taper tap which you use to start and you can see it's tapered it's got very little um, cutting action at the tip and then it gets bigger and bigger as it goes deep so that's a taper tap now next up is a plug tap which only runs the threads down so far. I think this is probably about the full diameter is up there. So you can use it to start. It's rather difficult. I've tried. But this will only run threads down so far for, I think, I guess a plug. And then there's a bottom tap. Wait, that's the taper tap. This, wow, this is pretty bad. This is the plug tap right here. And it's dirty. I must have used it. And then this is the bottom. Yeah. Wow. So a plug tap only goes to about here. The bottom taps a little bit further, not that much. But this is why I buy the extreme bottom taps. These are YG ones off of Amazon and they'll put threads all the way down to the bottom, the very bottom. So I own a complete set of these guys, both Imperial and Metric. And when you're trying to um, thread, a lot of these guys will have a dome or they'll have a hole at the end. When I'm in the lathe or the mill, I'll use one of these guys. I made this one a long time ago it's for the dome type and it'll hold a lot of pressure and keeps it absolutely straight as I use an Allen wrench and run the tap down in. 
If it's got the hole in it, you can use this type off the shelf. Um, and it'll hold again, you know, half inch, half inch. This guy though, I found out if you undo the screw, remove the spring, you can flip this around and it's for the dome type on the other end of this guy. This holds less pressure than this one, but they still do the job. And if this is primarily done in the mill, I do most of my threading. Uh, quite a few times though, yeah, I do do it on the lathe. So uh, that's all I can say about taps and dies.